Jane, let's get to read on this uh, from Ambassador John Negroponte, of course, the former Deputy Secretary of State. So much more. And Ambassador, I do want to touch, obviously, on Syria and all that. I do want to first touch on this meeting with the Japanese Prime Minister and President Trump. The Japanese are a little bit uh, ticked that, uh, and that's probably put it mildly, um, that the president hasn't eased up on the trade uh, tough talk with them, um, and that, they're, they're, that they have been a good friend and been very responsive, uh, and that instead um, they're getting bad treatment here. Have they? Is that right? Yeah, uh, although I, I've been given to understand that the aluminum and steel products that were involved were not as important to, to Japan as they were to some of the other countries in this particular case. But uh, you got to acknowledge the fact that Mr. Abe seems to have uh, some kind of privileged place uh, in his relationship with the president. The uh, meeting three times, as you just said, down at Mar-a-Lago. I think they have very good chemistry. He was the first leader the president met after he uh, won the election. So... Uh, this is a critical alliance. It's the most important single alliance we have in the East Asia uh, Pacific region. It's the uh, linchpin, if you will, of our whole alliance uh, system in that part of the world. So this is an important meeting. And our whole counter to China, right? The president has indicated here he wants to see some concessions other the Chinese. An ambassador, they might have first indicated an area where they would be more flexible, and that is on these tariffs regarding automobiles. Uh, now the idea of being... Uh, allow U.S. manufacturers to come in without necessarily having Chinese local partners. Uh, that wouldn't strike me to be a huge commitment, but on the part of the Chinese, it's, uh, you know, a big development. What do you think? Well, I think, uh, it, I think we need to be uh, strategic in our economic relationship with China. Uh, uh, they need us. We need them. The last administration started uh, discussing a bilateral investment treaty with the government of China. That's been suspended. Uh, in this administration. I think it'd be good to get those started again to see if we can improve uh, our terms of investment. Many of the disputes we have with China could be dealt with if we were to have a good bilateral investment treaty with that country. Um, let me switch to Syria right now because as I'm here and you're well aware, sir, the, uh, there's a move afoot, on, uh, a bipartisan move, uh, to check the president on these foreign incursions like what we did in Syria over the weekend, that it would have to be run by Congress first. Uh, and and it, it, this move has happened every time we see a U.S. president taking such action on, on, on his own. Uh, where is this going? What do you read into it? Do you endorse it? Well, I, uh, I would hope it doesn't go too far. I think under Article uh, 2 of the Constitution, the president's got ample authority to respond to these kinds of emergency situations. And I think emergency is the key word. If you want to respond quickly to something, but you have to go to Congress, and then you might have some debate that gets interfered with by uh, political considerations, uh, you, you certainly can't act as quickly uh, sometimes as you need to. So I, I would hope it doesn't uh, get very far. I think we need to give our president the flexibility uh, to react appropriately as quickly uh, as a situation might call for. All right, I think it was Senator Rand Paul, uh, Bob Corker has echoed this. We've seen Tim Kaine, a, a former Democratic vice presidential candidate, who said that it's one thing to give the president a little bit well, well, leeway, but you don't want to give him a sort of an unwritten check, an unsigned check to do whatever he wants. How do you prevent that, uh, especially if there's a move the president might be entertaining to follow up if, let's say, Aside, where to use chemical weapons again? Well, I, I, first of all, I don't think you're going to prevent the president from doing that if he decides in his best judgment that that's the thing to do. Secondly, I think that's what the whole uh, executive uh, Congress relationship is about. You have to have hearings. You have to have discussions. We've got our military leaders going up there this afternoon. That's exactly the kind of thing that needs to be done. But we just have to have a broad dialogue uh, domestically and between the relevant branches of government uh, so that we can... Uh, reach uh, the best possible meeting of the minds as to how to go about these things. You know, it, it, you're a different fellow to bounce this off of, but if you'll indulge me, because of the foreign policy <laughs> implications, and that is the president of this ongoing Bob Mueller investigation, it seems to be an investigation that is veered widely from its original course, sir, and uh, it's being picked up in the foreign press more than I can ever remember. And I'm wondering at what point it weighs on how foreign leaders think of us, deal with us. What do you think? Well, I think as a general proposition, 
when countries uh, look at each other and their respective uh, domestic political situations, when they see uh, internal stress of this kind, uh, they're tempted to reach the conclusion that the country may, in some way or another, be a little bit less powerful and a little bit uh, uh, less influential than it had been previously. So I think this kind of debate um, reflects uh, on our influence uh, around the world, and I think people maybe uh, uh, take us a, a little less seriously as a re result of this domestic debate. Not entirely so, but at least in right. part. Would it be even far less seriously if the president were to fire Bob Mueller? Would that invite a constitutional crisis or something that you think would be, uh, you know, an international kind of quandary for us? Right. You know, I, I, obviously, I, I don't know, and I'm not entirely certain, but I can tell you one thing, because I was already in government at the time of uh, the Nixon administration. Sure. And I, I was abroad at the time that he announced his resignation. and. A lot of people I talked to at the time uh, thought that this was a sign of tremendous American political strength. Our political system is the envy of many countries in the world because we were able to absorb that shock and make that transition and move on to business as usual uh, not long after he had resigned. So, you know, it, it cuts both ways. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, it is uniquely American our ability yeah. to yeah, well, move our on system without really blood on the streets. Yeah. That's correct. Absolutely. All right. Ambassador, thank you very, very much. I always appreciate it. Yeah, thank John you. Ne John Negroponte.